Veronika Viktor a Vista Print. And they, they are going to need a little bit time for set up uh, their Zooming Prezi presentation. I love Prezi, it's really a good uh, presenting software, I believe. And they are going to give us uh, the um, uh, challenges and solutions for, for reaching global markets. Uh, by Vistaprint. Vistaprint is a marketing solutions provider. They, they are uh, doing things like what you say, bringing your uh, business cards, but also making sure that your business cards are in line with your C corporate image, uh, web pages, uh, presentation templates, and so on. And they are going to explain how they managed uh, to reach uh, uh, coverage in 15 out of 23 official European languages. They, they are going to give us the resulting process, also the story, how they got there. Range of products. We have over um, over 100 products actually, and they range from. 
from uh, marketing products to consumer products like invitation and announcement. And we also have, uh, as you can see here, digital products like website and uh, email marketing. And as you can see on this page, there are many elements, and uh, of course, all of them are from the translation that needs to be So, who's behind this website? Uh, behind this website, there is our global creative department uh, that benefits from the framework that we put in place. Um, this global creative department is composed, composed by over 160 creative uh, people across the globe. And you can see um, very different roles, like graphic designers, content strategists, copywriters, localization specialists, and project managers. They all collaborate together. So this creative department uh, was faced with the challenge that um, uh, regardless of how good the translation was, regardless of how uh, hard the localization specialists work on translating that copy line to their target locale, um, we still had to deal with very American images, right? Uh, and this, these are two examples from our home, of images that we're using on our homepage. Uh, one for our business offering, postcards, and second for consumer products, invitations and announcements. And you can see that, uh, or you can imagine that even if the translation was great, you're still dealing on the top image with uh, a very American house, you know, these really big houses that will not be relevant in certain countries. Um, and in the uh, bottom image, I'm still waiting for somebody to offer things lemonade in Spain, for example. Um, so. Uh, our challenge was really to uh, make sure that when a customer visits our website, they really have a, a strong connection uh, with it. They really feel like uh, uh, you know they they really are our focus, and we are here to, to serve them. Right. So we wanted to take a standardized website and uh, create a fully localized version of that website by simply adding new levels of localization that were uh, efficient, scalable, and, and really helped us attain that full flow localization. So according to Vintage Sings, uh, we have uh, localization strategies for the global distance. In order to have a fully localized website, we need to have all these components available. So we, we need to have a translation to allow the management, global gateway, localized customers, Localized policies, procedures, and shipping transactions, localized UI elements, but also customer customization of our content. And when we started the process with this project, we realized we had almost all the components already available and in place on the website, but we were missing the customer customization of the web content. So we, we realized we wanted to focus on this component. So once we identified what was missing, uh, we need to go get business support, right? How do you explain a, a company, a, a public company, that you need to take some time and some resources to, to, to pursue this initiative, right? Um, the most important aspect of it for us was that we had the internal talent uh, to solve the problem. Uh, that really made it easy for us, it made it affordable, and uh, uh, made it much easier uh, to sell to the business to get the backing that we needed. We uh, then took a look at uh, the benefits of localization. We evaluated the effort that we were putting into localizing our website, uh, our websites, and, and the outcome, were we happy with it or not? And the answer is from the images that you saw earlier, that uh, the images were just not quite there. We wanted to get go a step further. We also took a look at our existing processes and tools and modified those accordingly and develop a pilot program and a small team just to make sure and get the validation that we were uh, going down the right path. So we take a closer look at the specific business benefits. Uh, customer focus is a key uh, strategic point for Vistaprint uh, to be successful, right? And localization is a, is a key point of, of customer focus, right? Without it, we really, we really couldn't say that, that that is a strategic point for the company. Um, <clears throat> we want to establish a higher credibility with the European market because usually that will result in a higher net promoter score, 
right? We want people to be excited about the company, about our products, we want people to come back to us and also talk others about us with uh, friends and colleagues, right? Higher NPS usually results in uh, an increased uh, purchase of them. One more developing the pilot team and program, uh, we realized that we had all the all the ingredients that we needed to create an organization center of excellence. Meaning that uh, we had a, a team, um, a dedicated team that we um, own and uh, define and also inform about what the organization means and what it is. So we, could, we selected two teams actually. One is the organization team. Uh, so the organization team is composed by 10 in-house translators. Um, we are, uh, I'm actually the current translator, so we are translators, but we also, uh, let's say, act as consultants for our market. Um, and we are experts in market marketing translation and translation because this is what we do mainly. Uh, we translate, of course, copy, um, marketing copy for the website, but also for email campaigns and banners and other promotional materials. And also, well, the other team was. And we chose a small group of 10 web designers. The reason that we chose the web designers was because they had the highest and most complex requirements of localization. The web team localizes about 1,500 images a year into 21 locales. Um, it, we also have the most complex work group, meaning we have to work with several departments, including our engineering department, who uh, gets our, our assets, our content out to the web. Um, also, we have the uh, highest number of tools that need to be used in order to localize our content. And we have the highest localization requirements. Unlike other creative departments, when we localize a web page, we have to localize it for all locales, right? So we knew that if we could solve the problem uh, or the challenge for this team, we could easily solve it for any other creative team. So now that we uh, have some background information as to who is this to bring uh, the creative team behind it and, and, and what our challenge was, uh, let's take a look at the framework that we built. Um, and before we talk about the framework, let's talk about the uh, three key steps in localizing our web content, which are planning, right? making sure that we understand the requirements, uh, what is expected when localizing content for the web, Executing that content, right? and then reviewing that content to make sure that it meets our, 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 our needs and it meets our standards as well. The framework is made out of four components, uh, which are modular. They can be used in conjunction, or they can be used individually, depending on the stage of the project, the size of the project, or what is your involvement uh, with the project. The, Components are what we call cultural style guides, and we'll go into a uh, little in detail for each of these components in a minute. Libraries of translated copy, libraries of localized images, and a sound review process that ensures that um, throughout every step of the way, the localization, again, is meeting our standards and is meeting our needs. The first component is cultural style guides. And it's basically a view book. You should have uh, this one in your table so it's free to, to go through them. Um, and basically, uh, and let's take our European market for, for this example. Um, one, of the, one of the things that we were trying to achieve was efficiency, right? Europe alone, for recent things, are uh, made up of 15 countries. And obviously, we couldn't come back to our business and say we need resources to create 15 times as many images, unique images. So we took the European market and uh, through the cultural style guides, uh, group countries by region, right? Um, uh, that share certain commonalities culturally. And to avoid any snap tours uh, and, and avoid any travel, the style guides also highlight key differences between those countries. To hopefully help you better understand what that looks like, uh, Europe, again 15 countries, was split up uh, between the regions of Europe North, Europe South, Europe West, 
Europe Central and uh, United Kingdom, right? Um, for example, Europe North is made up of Denmark, Finland, Norway, and Sweden. Whereas for Christopher in particular, Europe South is made up of Spain and Italy. You can see how those countries which share certain commonalities in my imagine where those countries really differ culturally. So the second component of the framework is the So we have first of the lines that are actually taken by designers, but they have created many images that go on the website. I mean, for example, I look at the business cards, they will need some sample text to put on the business cards. So in this uh, database, we collect all, all these copy lines that are translated, and it's important to say that there's specific, creating specific use case scenario. Uh, because the use case scenario really gives the context to all the stakeholders involved in the process. So for example, in this case, the use case would be the luxury real estate agency. Let's say that we have a conference strategy of this uh, that needs to um, have um, a postcard for a real luxury real estate agency created. So they will request uh, the copy to a copywriter, and then the copywriter will, will write the line like this one, and it will ask for it in for the translation. This, uh, this line will be translated into all languages that we offer, and, and then any designer could go into this uh, database and take that translated copy and put it in the image. And that would speed up the process. And also one thing that is very good about the translation, the translation library is that it's, um, all these copy lines can be reused. So if you have another template of design that is also for a luxury real estate agency, it could be reused and also speed up. The third component of our framework is called localized image libraries, and we are going to talk about two different uh, types of image libraries. Um, <clears throat> the first one would be stock photography, right? How many people have driven in a different country and saw the same stock image of a very blonde woman that really wasn't relevant, wasn't connected with that with the country, right? Um, uh, so. Uh, what we have done is we've built out, again, the, uh, a really key concept is use cases, because the use case is what's going to give the different stakeholders, whether it's a copywriter, a localization specialist, a designer, the context on what they need to deliver. So while you have a copywriter and a translator working on that, on that perfect line for a real estate agency that focuses on luxury apartments, uh, you have a designer working in parallel uh, researching and purchasing the stock imagery that is going to pair up eventually with that copy line. <clears throat> so from left to right, you're going to see examples of uh, our North American uh, uh, region. Uh, next, you see an image for Europe North, and uh, lastly, a, an image for Europe South, again, based on the use case scenario. A second type of image library is what we call a product, a localized product library, which is, uh, in here you can really start to see the framework uh, uh, falling, uh, coming into place, falling together to make, to make up a final product. Right? So you see one of our, our key products uh, for VisaBrief postcards, and you see how that copy line and the translations that go along with it are starting to pair up with the images that were purchased, stock images that were purchased for that use case scenario. Right? Uh, so again, you start to see uh, how the North American home uh, has a stock image for the outside, but as well as the uh, inner rooms. Same for Europe uh, South and Europe North. And again, because there are commonalities between different countries, uh, you don't really need to change uh, the image per country. You can uh, pretty much reuse uh, some of the imagery and simply uh, replace the translation based on your needs. So the fourth, the fourth component of the framework is the real process. And when we um, created this framework, we wanted to have a reduced process for every step of the, of it, of the process. So uh, we wanted to make sure that all the copy that is published also a 
want to make sure that uh, the quota is going to select a relevant for the region. Um, so the first step is uh, the use of methods, digital lessons management system, to review the selection of localized locations, to ensure that they are correct for the region. Then we use a vision to review localized project images and merchandise images, so the images that are going on the website, um, and also to uh, review image templates with authors. And uh, well, the last step would be the review of the web pages before they go live. So let's take a closer look of, um, at the localized stock photography review, um, where you can see that we have uh, an image that has some tags. These tags uh, are important because they uh, tell us about the use case scenario and the region. So actually, the name of the region is the same one that we have on the sky card, so that it's easier for everyone to use for photos. Um, and here, for example, we have, uh, well, it could be an email open for a, a graduation invitation, and we have the use case is a graduation, and uh, the review is not an And it's important to have this kind of facts, because uh, if we need to create an invitation for Europe South, for instance, we don't want to have this kind of image. So we want to make sure that the design is the, the design is going to be adapted. And those for an image of a project for graduation for Europe South, do not find this. And also we have um, the review of uh, localized and product images and merchandise images. Um, so this is a review that is done by the localization team, so by the translator. Uh, we actually uh, review and approve all the images that are created by designers and that are supposed to go live on our website. So if you see the screenshot on top, we have a list of all the reviews that we create and we created. The reviews are kind of reports. And then we have at the bottom uh, the, the actual report where we have on the left um, the list of images that have been created by designers. And then on the right, on the right pane, uh, we have um, a section where we post comments. So here, for example, um, we can even request uh, for a change because sometimes we provide the translation, but then we see the context, we see the visual, and we realize it's not really what we want, so we want to change. Or sometimes there are problems with the spacing, margins, or nothing text and we still want to get that change. And sometimes we just want to approve because it's uh, it's good. And the last step is uh, the review of the localized web pages. So this uh, this review is also done by the organization team before the pages, the new pages go, go live. Uh, so normally when we do this uh, review, we find issues like uh, overlapping tags or text that falls down in the right and where it's not supposed to be. Uh, we have problems with buttons, we have um, yeah, margin display issues. So we've just taken a look at the four components of our framework. Um, and today, Davis was uh, helping Visoprint uh, deliver more relevant images uh, for our websites as well as our email campaigns, print campaigns, marketing, marketing materials in general. Um, uh, and it is this process that's really helping us uh, become more relevant uh, in the European market. What I wanted us to do is uh, uh, go back to a few slides and just see how each of these components uh, falls in different steps of the of the uh, localization process. And the first step, if you remember, would be planning. Uh, again, what the cultural style guides are a key component in helping either the content strategies or the graphic designer uh, do their research and familiarize themselves with a region or a country that, that they might not be familiar with. Um, <clears throat> the use cases are based on, on marketing strategy, and again, those use cases are uh, really providing the context to different stakeholders ahead of time so that they can, they can deliver uh, assets sooner. And the stock photo and review uh, and approval process, which helps us build out those libraries so that designers are uh, spending more time on working on that perfect layout, that perfect uh, piece, rather than on the busy uh, production work of uh, looking for looking up for looking the images up and such. 
The second step is the execution of that localized content. Uh, and here, all the libraries uh, come in really handy. Again, uh, imagine uh, having a team of uh, dozens or hundreds of designers uh, that just need that perfect copy line uh, readily available. Uh, so they can, they can very easily go back to the translation library and get that copy line in the language that they need based on the use case scenario they are looking for. Um, again, the libraries of localized images um, uh, are particularly important uh, in the execution process as well. Again, if you can think of a marketing campaign or, or a web page that needs to go tomorrow, right, having those assets readily available is going to save you uh, lots of time, uh, but it's also going to help the designers spend more time on what's important to them, the localization specialist, on transcribing that copy. And finally, the review process, which ensures that what we are delivering throughout the localization process uh, is, is on point, right? Um, <clears throat> so again, we, uh, as Veronica just went through the different uh, review processes that we have in place, just to make sure that nothing uh, falls through the cracks. And that makes up our localization framework. We'll leave you with, um, uh, uh, you'll see on the top the uh, two examples that we saw at first and uh, how those examples have become much more relevant uh, with this framework in place, right? Uh, you see the pink lemonade is gone, you see that big American house is gone. Um, and again, the creative team can really spend their time where it's valuable as opposed to uh, these little busy things that, that take time away from, from what's important. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, I ask you for questions for uh, our great presenters. Uh, three, Lee, uh, Victor, and Veronica for this <laughs> I think this is uh, amazingly to the point, like uh, very good uh, details. I, I greatly enjoyed it. Do you have some uh, questions, comments? Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm particularly interested in the cultural style guides because I'm actually going to undertake something similar for our marketing content where I create style guides as well. So I'm interested in. Uh, how they were created, who was the main uh, contributors? Um, was it mainly linguists or were marketing people also involved? Because I see that as one of the major challenges. Sure. So, um, uh, uh, something that's been really key and, and really uh, uh, became uh, evident to us um, was the collaboration between teams. Right? Uh, a really long time ago, translators used to see we're in one corner of the building where the designers were on the complete opposite corner. And that has changed for us, right? The cultural side guides in particular uh, is really a, a really uh, a closely knit collaboration between uh, strategists, localization specialists, <coughs> uh, designers, and copywriters, right? Um, uh, and the localization specialist is the owner uh, of, of the guide. So uh, while the designer is providing the support to ensure that it's, that it's beautiful, that it's legible, that it uh, touches, that they are consistent, right? Because imagine if you have a really big campaign and it's touching several regions, you want to make sure that when you open up that view book, when you open up the cultural style guide, the information is going to be uh, presented in, in a consistent manner. Um, so, so we are there to support the localization specialist, but the localization specialist is really the ultimate owner of their particular region. Well, I would say, I must admit that we needed to get the alignment from at least one marketing person from our country team. But that's you and she that everyone is on the same page. It was mainly, as people were saying, owned by the localization team, but it's true that they were Hi guys, uh, great presentation. Um, I wanted to ask about this that you're showing there. Um, we started doing this uh, similar work 
that uh, you do for Microsoft, but what we felt that's been happening is we can't really localize the images and the content anymore, or just localize. We, we started to curate them, you know, creating content that's cultural. Uh, we culturally requested, maybe it's some type of celebration that there's only in Italy or only in a country. Do you feel that you do this, you have to do this yourselves as well? That maybe you look at something that comes from the US and you say, we don't do that, but well, you do something that's similar and we have to completely create something new. Uh, sure, thank you. Um, so well, we have seen that there are uh, really two of us, three main levels of localization. Um, there is the type of localization where you just need to translate the copy and that, and that suffices. Uh, uh, we have a type of localization where uh, uh, you know the, the bottom left image can really uh, be used in uh, France, it can be used in Spain, right? It would, and it would still be relevant. Um, but yes, we, we do find that there are certain images that are uh, uh, just unique to a single market and there's no way around that. Um, <clears throat> the purpose of this framework is really again to uh, make it agile enough where uh, if you can reuse assets for multiple countries, then, then great, you know, you, you just save yourself a lot of time. But, for example, we recently um, delivered uh, designs that are relevant only for our uh, British market, right? Um, so if you, if you create a, a design for a taxi driver, right, a taxi cab from New York is going to look absolutely different from the one in Spain, which is different from the British taxi uh, cab. And then you start to really question uh, how far do you need to go because the taxi uh, cabs in Barcelona are absolutely different from the, taxi, uh, the taxis in, in Madrid, right? So how far do you go? to say that you give people what they uh, are expecting and so you know you give the Germans an Oktoberfest and you give the, uh, the, the French the baguettes and you give the Italians uh, fancy cars and, and, is that, and, and my question is you know not being a marketing person but is that always the right strategy do you think um, for example because you know sometimes you know you know the, 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 the Dubliners have just organized an Oktoberfest um, the, the, the Germans have Turkish, you know, food uh, parties. The, you know, if you go to London, you will hardly see an English person. Uh, so the, <laughs> the, the the thing is, you know, can you can you make those connections, you know, for for, for, for countries and with, with with cultures? And, and is there, you know, the typical German or the typical whatever, you know, uh, English person? And um, it's not just might sometimes. And you know, the other thing is, I think that the other question that I had was, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm not young anymore, but <laughs> I'm not so young, I feel very young, but you know, when, I, when I see young people listening to music or, you know, buying um, jeans or t-shirts or whatever, they all buy the same stuff, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, um, you know, whether you're in China or in San Francisco or in Frankfurt, and, you know, is there, is there also, have you seen a different kind of le level or, or layer that is not you know, determined by you know, countries, but by maybe age or, 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 or access to um, funding, you know, money? Do they have rich parents or do they have poor parents? You know, do they, <laughs> yeah. Is their father a banker or is their father uh, you know, working in the fields in central China somewhere? You know? sure. Um, sure. So um, uh, culture is a ridiculously complex thing, right? Uh, and, 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 and you can take a subculture in part and subdivide it God knows how many times. 
Um, uh, so yeah, we uh, if you open up the cultural satellites, in the first page of the satellite, uh, the first thing that you should notice uh, is stereotypes, right? Uh, it's really easy to fall into them. Uh, I, I found out that not all Spanish people have uh, Torero hats. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so so uh, yeah, for us as, as a creative department, uh, it's very important, um, uh, several things. One, that we move away from stereotypes, that we understand that, uh, 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 you know, certain traditions um, uh, are important, but, but uh, not just focus on, the, on those. So, uh, to your point, market research is, is uh, crucial to our process, right? So, uh, for example, we recently created uh, uh, design templates for our British market. And it's for Indian food. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's not just uh, uh, fish and chips and, and uh, blood sausage. So, we. So, so yeah, that's, that's key to us. Uh, the market research framing up with the, with the creativity. And also business decision, right? Because as you said, um, uh, what from this huge market that represents one country, uh, who are you targeting? And, and if we don't know who, who, who we want to talk to, then uh, it's impossible for us to create that communication. And sometimes you have to accept some things that we need to change, but I don't know if we I think we are taking one last question. You, right? Uh, um, and yeah, I will tell you more about logistics just after this last question. I'm curious about um, after all this effort that you have been, you said around six, seven years, like uh, you have been developing on, on these uh, databases and images and the way the processes that you are implemented. Is that the case, or for how long have you been? Uh, so, we, so we've actually uh, have been working on this framework for about a year and a half, I would say. And but it does feel like six years. So <laughs> <laughs> and the question is, how, how are you being measured? How, how the success of this effort has been measured? Um, sure, so um, uh, it's really an excellent question. Um, and uh, um, an emotional connection you cannot really measure uh, uh, at least not scientifically with profit, right? Um, but we do uh, measure uh, net promoter score, and, and uh, that, is, that is key to us. Uh, as we said, um, a really uh, fundamental strategic point for Vistaprint is customer focus, right? We really want to deliver exactly what our customers want. And um, uh, this is not the only initiative that is backing that, um, that strategic point. But we have seen our, our net promoter score going up, right? So uh, basically, it's just uh, customer loyalty. Do you, are you, do you see your customers coming back? Uh, do you see customers excited about you? Uh, so uh, testimonials, for example, customer testimonials are, are fundamental also. And, and we are seeing uh, uh, really achieve uh, their, does that answer your question? Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks again for uh, this excellent presentation and for answering to the point. Uh, final round of applause for.